Hey everyone, have you ever wanted to restore a game or an application that you purchased and downloaded on your PlayStation 4 back to your jailbroken PS4? Well, now there's a way that you can do that. Let's check this out. So in short, what this is, is that this is going to be a way that you can restore games that you've purchased, games that you have downloaded on your primary PS4 with a valid PSN account. Now, the key thing to keep in mind here is, is that I said your primary PS4. So if you have multiple PS4s lying around the house, or if that PS4 is not listed as your primary PS4 in your account settings, this will not work. So the reason why you need to pay a bit of attention to this is, is that if you've already got a jailbroken PS4, maybe you're on 9.00, or something earlier, you cannot connect to the PlayStation Network in order to download that content again because you simply have to be on 9.03. And what this means is, is that the content that you have paid for digitally, it's absolutely forever lost unless you use this method or some of the older methods that are already out there. Now, this won't work if you've never logged in to a PSN account on your PS4 console. This also is not going to work if your PS4 was not set as your primary console when it wasn't jailbroken. So inside of your PlayStation 4's setting, you can activate your console as a primary. And in order for this to work, your console will need to be primary. I'm going to repeat that a couple of times to hopefully let that sink in. This also won't work if you've never downloaded the content on your primary console. So while you may have logged in to PSN and while your console may be the primary console, if you've never downloaded the game before, then it won't work. And the next thing that I have to say is, is that the PKGs that are generated, they're generated by Sony and Sony servers, which means you'll see my PKGs in this video. You can't go in and download them and then just share them. They are locked and encrypted to only be activated on my primary console underneath my account, which was previously logged in to the PlayStation Network. So with that being said, Let's jump in and learn how to do this. I'm just going to FTP into it. So let's go ahead and open up FileZilla. We're going to go to my PS4 and we're going to go to connect. And once we are there, I'm just going to navigate out to the system data and then the priv. And then finally, license. Okay, so there is two files in this folder. We're just going to grab the entitlement.db one more quick thing is that I just went ahead and created a local folder called Entitlement where I can keep up with this. So go ahead and drag and drop that to your local device. And you should just see Entitlement.db. We are going to need a hex editor. So I'll provide this link below. And I am just going to download the one that just says English. And you can download it right here. Once that's downloaded, we'll switch over to Windows Explorer. I have the HXD setup.zip, and then I've went ahead and extracted it, and there's just a setup file inside of that. Go ahead and double click on it, and we're going to select our language, and then we're going to go next, and then accept the terms, next, 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 and I'm going to create a shortcut desktop, and it should be installed. I am going to uncheck the box that says view the readme.txt, and hit finish because we know what we're doing, right? Right? So once it opens, head up to file and then select open. And you're just going to simply navigate to wherever your entitlement.db is located on your computer. Mine's right here. And now I'm going to open it. So we're going to be using a hex editor to find the file that we need but also keep in mind that if you are familiar with SQLite, you could install SQLite and explore this DB directly from there. 
But for what we need to do today, it's just simple enough. Let's just go ahead and press the Control and the F key, and we'll get this dialog box. And what we're going to search for is going to be simply .json, and then we're going to hit the OK button, and it found a .json entry. Now, one thing to keep in mind before we go further is, is that you might also, for some of the newer games, have to search for .xml. Regardless, the process is the same. Okay, so now that we've found that JSON file, we're going to copy out this ASCII string, which is formulated into a URL. So select everything that you see here, starting with the HTTP all the way to the .json. And from here, you could go ahead and just do a Control C to copy, or if you feel a bit safer, then you could right click and then just go copy. Let's bring up something like Notepad here. Okay, and if we paste that into our Notepad, then we will notice that there is a few characters that look a bit out of place. Let's go ahead and fix that up. Let's go to Edit, Replace, in the Find What text box, make sure you have the slashes as I have, and we're just gonna replace that with a forward slash. And now, Replace All, and now we have a valid URL. Okay, and so let's just go ahead and copy that, and we'll minimize this notepad for the time being because I want to explain a few other things first. Go ahead and bring up the Find Dialog again with a Control and an F, and here it should still have the .json, and this time we're going to click on Search All, and down at the bottom you can see a number of different applications in games that has been found. So we have YouTube right here. There is one of our media player applications. Here is a Plants vs. Zombie game. And you can double click to go to that entry. Now that I'm at that entry, I have the luxury of already knowing what this game is. But if you don't know what the game is, it's very easy to find out. You can obviously look through the JSON here, or another way is, is by simply looking for the title ID. In this instance, it's just CUSA10863. I can take that information and copy it, then head back over to my web browser, and then paste that in. And we can see that this matches up to Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville. Let's do one more to make sure that you've got it. I'm going to select Virtual Tennis 2. There it is. And I'm just going to grab out the title ID again, copy it, and I'm going to put that into my search engine. And there we go. It is Tennis World Tour 2. Now, this is the game that we're going to pick to reinstall back onto our PlayStation 4. So we need to, again, scroll up to where it starts with HTTP and copy all of the text until we finish with .json. Right-click, copy, and we'll put this back inside of Notepad again, and let's clean up the URL. And then we're going to copy it and then put it inside of our browser. Now, in my instance, what I did was I went ahead and I signed in to my PlayStation account. You don't have to do this, but I was thinking that maybe it needed an authenticated account. All right, and let's go ahead and let's just paste in that JSON URL and press return. And here we go. We can see that there is two PKGs that's associated with this. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download both of these. So select the first URL and copy it, and then just go ahead and paste it into a new tab. It'll start downloading. Head back over and let's grab the second file and let's copy it. And you can paste that also in a new tab. And now you should see down at the very bottom, both of these files are downloading successfully. So now you'll need an application called PKG Merge just head over to this GitHub URL and go to the releases and download whichever version is relevant for the architecture that you're using for your version of Windows. 
In my case, I'm using X64, so go ahead and download that. Once downloaded, I've simply grouped all of the files in one single folder. So we have both of our PKG files as well as the application, which was just simply called PKG Merge. Let's create a new folder here, and let's just give this the name of Packages. Let's drag and drop both of our PKG files into it. And now in order to create one single package file, all we need to do is to drag the packages folder on top of the executable, and we should see this. Now give it a moment or two or three, and eventually it will finish up and you will have one single PKG file. So go into your packages here, and you should see the file. In my case, it is now a little over seven gigabytes. And in order to preserve the original files, in case I want to do something with them later, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna simply right click on the merged file and select copy. And then I'm gonna go back up one folder and I'm just going to create another folder and give this the name of final and then go inside of it. And then I'm just gonna simply copy that merged PKG into this folder. Okay, with that complete, it's time to head over to our PlayStation 4. On the PS4, I'm going to use PS4 Explorer, and I'm going to navigate to my USB drive, and then Virtual Tennis 2, and then my final folder, and then here is the merged PKG. As you'll see here, it does say official because this is an official package. This came directly down from Sony. So go ahead and press the X button here, says added to downloads and now we can see that tennis world tour 2 is installing and once this is complete you should be able to run your game now remember those disclaimers that i gave at the very beginning of this video about the fact that you couldn't download this package and run it unless your playstation is already your primary console and that you've already downloaded it on here before. Well, this is what happens if you haven't abided by those rules. So I'm going to launch the game here, and it says it cannot use the content. The content can only be used with the following users who have a license for it. Now I'm logged in as my local user, and even if I decided to do something like switch to the PSN user that I already have own this PlayStation 4, then this is what will happen. Okay, so I'm logged in as the user that that content's associated to, and we can see right off the bat, there is the little plus icon, as well as there is a padlock. So if I try to run this game now, it says cannot use the content. If you activate this PS4 as your primary PS4, you can use the content even when the server is not available. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm currently on the road to 5K subscribers here on YouTube. Only with your help can I achieve it. I've got lots of amazing more content coming, as well as the brand new Discord. So I love your faces. I'll see you on the next one. Michael out.